any time I look at the fine detail of skeletons, I become inspired. This gorgeous red and blue skeleton. For a scientist, this is a really fertile visual field. I've spent my career looking at morphology, at shape, how animals are formed. By looking at form, we can understand function, how biological systems work. For 18 years, I've been clearing staining fishes, and amphibians, and reptiles. There are 25,000 species of fish. I, I'm willing to say that I want one of every one of them. Picking and choosing amongst the very most interesting ones is part of the fun. 3D CT scan is fabulous, but it doesn't visualize soft tissue. MRIs tend to be too low resolution. Histology, slicing things thin and reconstructing them, doesn't give you an inherent 3D sense. The big advantage of clearing and staining is it gives you beautiful three-dimensional reconstruction of anatomy in the animal and it shows me in beautiful detail the cartilage. Clearing and staining is not a new technique. This is a, an old technique and it's a very simple technique. The first thing you do is solidify all its tissues. Then you stain all of the cartilage bright blue and all of the bone bright red. At this point you have a fish that looks just like a fish that's as stiff as a board then we put the fish in trypsin, which eats up basically almost everything in the fish except collagen. Collagen, the stuff that's in your skin, holds the fish together. Then a little bit of bleach, that gets rid of the dark colors, and you're left with a white fish of collagen. It has the same index of refraction as glycerin. And by putting it in glycerin, the entire fish becomes transparent with this beautiful butterfly ring. It wasn't until I cleared and stained that whole animal that I saw the patterns of the joints and the wings forming these secondary arcs that were just visually just, I mean, arresting. It was absolutely beautiful. My artistic interest in them then drove a different set of scientific questions. Is, is this artistic element? different among different species and so we then cleared and stained a bunch of other specimens and when you look at the pattern of these lines you get different feelings about sort of how mobile they are how volant they are and it turned out that quantifying the positions of those lines was really an important part of understanding how energy was transferred through the wing so for me there's a real feedback between the artistic appreciation of these specimens and the scientific appreciation of these specimens. Postdoc of mine, Steve Kajura, he, he brought hammerheads into the lab. And a hypothesis for the function of that crazy head was that they used it to turn. You know, wing out in front is a great way to turn really fast. But when we were looking at this head, Especially in the cleared and stained animal, when you circle it around in the glycerin, you don't really see the head tilting. The head kind of tracks really nicely flat. And it turns out that hammerhead sharks emphatically don't use their head to turn. They hold it dead flat. And the reason is that if they lifted one side up, that side would lose its electrosensory system's ability to see prey it seems obligatory to show some of the prettier results in the hopes that they'll take a look at those fish and go, wow, that's gorgeous. What did we really learn from that? And then realize that this approach to research often leads to completely unexpected discoveries.